Link Zero directives are Gaussian's method for specifying various computer resources that are available to the calculation. Some of the resources that can be specified with Link Zero commands include memory, disk space, and CPU resources. This video will discuss specifying each of these items in turn. We will also discuss Gaussian's default.root file for setting system-wide defaults for calculations. Directive names begin with a percent sign and they are placed before the root section within an input file. Gauss View also includes controls to make it easy to specify the most commonly used directives via the Link Zero panel within the Gaussian Calculation Setup dialog. Gaussian 16 needs memory in order to perform its calculations. By default, it allocates 800 megabytes. You can specify a maximum amount for the software to use. You may do so to increase program efficiency. Doing so may also prevent degradation of overall system performance on computers with limited resources. The Link Zero command for memory resources is percent %mem. Its value specifies how much memory, RAM, will be allocated for the calculation. Typically, you specify the desired amount of memory, including the units. In the Gaussian Calculation Setup dialog, the Memory Limit item on the Link Zero panel performs the same task. You can either select an item from the menu or use the Specify option to enter the desired value and units with the controls that appear. Here, we specify a maximum amount of 3 gigabytes. If you don't know how much memory your computer has available to it, you can quickly find out. For a Windows computer, open the File Explorer and right-click on This PC in the left column. Select Properties from the Context menu. Information about the computer appears, including the amount of installed memory. This information is also available from the command line using the System Info command. Calculations can often be completed more quickly by using more than one processor or core to perform it. Windows versions of Gaussian include shared memory parallel capabilities as part of their standard features, with the exception of 32-bit G16W, which is limited to one core. Consult the G16 documentation for a list of job types that can be run in parallel. The %nproc shared link 0 command specifies the number of processors, cores, to use for the calculation. The default is 1. The Gauss View Link Zero panel allows you to specify percent %n proc shared using the Shared Processors dropdown. Here, we allocate 8 cores for our calculation. For best performance and maximum efficiency, it is important to limit Gaussian CPU use to one thread per physical core. Hyperthreading is a technique offered by modern computers to allow more than one thread to execute simultaneously in each physical core. These multiple threads are also referred to as logical processors. We recommend disabling hyperthreading in the computer BIOS for systems used for Gaussian. Finding the number of cores present in your computer is also straightforward. Under Windows, we simultaneously press Control, Shift, and Escape, which opens the Task Manager. We click on More Details, and a comprehensive list of our computer processes appears. We choose the Performance tab, which reports the number of cores underneath the CPU utilization graph. Our computer has two. You can also use a PowerShell command to determine the number of cores. The more recent percent %CPU Link Zero command allows you to specify the specific cores on which to run the Gaussian calculation, rather than just the total number of cores to use. It takes a comma-separated list of core numbers and or core number ranges. The third example illustrates the use of an offset suffix having the form slash n, which says to take every nth core from the preceding list. So 0 to 31 slash 2 takes every second core from the range from 0 to 31, meaning cores 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on.
Gaussian uses several intermediate files throughout the execution of a calculation. By default, they are stored in the Gaussian scratch directory, designated by the Gauss underscore SCRDIR environment variable, or in the current directory. If no names are specified for these files, they are assigned auto-generated names. Unless you specify otherwise, these intermediate files are deleted at the end of a successful calculation. The most important of these is the checkpoint file, which is a results file that is updated as the job progresses. Once the job completes, this file can be used for results visualization. The checkpoint file is also needed for running follow-on calculations and restarting failed jobs when possible. We recommend always saving and retaining the checkpoint files from your calculations. This is accomplished by assigning the file a name via the percent check link zero command. The value given to this directive minimally includes the file name for the file. The most common practice is to use the same base name as the input file with the extension .chk. Gauss view adds such a directive by default to the input files that it generates. Note that you can specify either a plain file name or a full path name to percent check. In the first case, the file is placed in the current directory. The Gauss view link zero panel provides controls for specifying the checkpoint file. You can accept the default name or specify a different one using the specify option on the pop-up menu. We choose to maintain the default name given by Gauss View. It is also possible to run calculations starting from the data in previously created checkpoint files. This is accomplished by specifying the existing checkpoint file to percent check and including the relevant keywords in the new jobs root section. For example, geom equals check, guess equals read. Note that when you use an existing checkpoint file in this way, its original results are overwritten by those from the follow-on job. You can use data from an existing checkpoint file without modifying it by using the percent old check directive. This command copies data from an existing checkpoint file for use within the current job without modifying the original file. A different checkpoint file is used for the new job. Here, we use the old check file controls in the link zero panel. We specify the file as benopt, which refers to the file benopt.chk in the current directory. Both the checkpoint file and the old check file items include a navigate button to the right of their name fields. Clicking this button would allow us to select an existing checkpoint file using a file open dialog. Both items also have a full path checkbox as the final item in the line. When it is selected and the name field contains only a file name, Gauss view will include the entire path to the file within the corresponding link zero command. When it is unchecked, only the file name is included in the directive, which is what we choose to do here. When the name field includes a directory specification, the setting of full path is ignored. The read-write file is the largest of Gaussian's intermediate files. It has the extension of .rwf. This file is needed for restarting many long-running calculations, including analytic frequencies, coupled cluster calculations, and NMR predictions. You can name this file using the %rwf link 0 command, causing it to be retained after a successful job. Gauss view includes a field for it on the link zero panel of the Gaussian calculation setup dialog. Since intermediate files and especially the read write file can sometimes be very large, combining available space from more than one disk can be helpful on systems with limited disk resources. When the link zero commands value is a list, the corresponding intermediate file is broken into pieces if necessary. These file segments are stored using each list item in turn. Note that the segments specified in the list should be all located on different physical disks. Each location in the list is followed by a value specifying that segment's maximum size, for example, 4 GB. 
The special value of minus 1 can be used for the final item to let Gaussian determine the size. This example shows that the read-write file should use two directory locations in the SCR1 folder on the C drive and the SCR2 folder on the D drive, using the auto-generated name in both cases. The first segment has a maximum size of 1 GB. We can also specify the percent %RWF directive using Gauss view as we do here. In this case, we specify a single location for the read-write file. Since intermediate files can sometimes be very large, combining available space from more than one disk can be helpful on systems with limited disk resources. The Link0 panel's Edit subpanel displays the Link0 commands that Gauss View will generate based on the menu selections. You can also add Link0 commands for which there are not yet Gauss View controls, such as percent %CPU. Values that are based on the input file name, such as percent %check, will contain placeholders rather than the final file name. You can also edit the Link0 directives directly. If you change a value here, the corresponding menu item will also be updated when you return to the Options subpanel. For example, here we change percent %mem from 3 to 4 GB, and the change transfers back to the Options subpanel. You can also add Link0 commands for which there are not yet Gauss view controls, as we'll see later. A complete list of Link0 commands can be found on the Gaussian website. Its link is included at the end of this video. Additionally, we use the Gaussian Calculation Setup Preview panel to view the complete input file, including the Link0 commands. However, they cannot be altered here. Notice the difference between percent %check, which includes the full path, and percent %old check, which does not. Gaussian includes a way to provide intuitive names to intermediate files while still deleting them at the end of a successful calculation. The percent %no save directive functions as a dividing line within the link 0 file specifications in an input file. Files which are named before it appears, in other words, which are above it in the input file, will be assigned the specified name but will still be deleted if the job succeeds. Files which are named after it, that is, below it, are retained. For example, using these directives, the read-write file and the checkpoint file will both receive the base name Big Job, but only the checkpoint file will be kept for a successful job. The Max Disk keyword provides a mechanism for telling Gaussian how much disk space is available for the calculation's scratch data. The default is an unlimited amount of space. Max Disk is useful for limiting Gaussian's disk use on systems with limited available space. When disk is limited, Gaussian will choose algorithms based on the available space when possible. Note that Max Disk is a Gaussian keyword, not a Link0 directive. Accordingly, it must be entered into the corresponding field on the General panel of the Gaussian Calculation Setup dialog. Here, we specify its value as 600 gigabytes. You can find out the amount and locations of free disk space on various computers quite easily. Under Windows, open the File Explorer and select This PC. The hard disks present on the local system will appear in a report which shows their total size and available space. You can also determine free disk space using the DIR command. Defaults for the resources specified with Link0 commands can be set in the Gaussian default.root configuration file. Under Windows, the file is named default.ru, and its location is specified in the G16W preferences in the Scratch Path field. In Gauss View, clicking the Defaults button restores all settings throughout the Gaussian Calculation Setup dialog to those in the default scheme. Here, doing so changes the root section keywords and clears the additional keywords field. It also restores all Link0 commands to their defaults, which are also taken from the scheme if it specifies them, or, more typically, from the defaults in the default.root file, as is the case here. The Link0 default root subpanel 
lists the contents of the system default.root file as well as the path where it is stored. The lines within this file are labeled with a character enclosed between two hyphens. For example, dash m dash specifies the default amount of memory for a calculation. Here it is set to 6 gigabytes. Here is a list of directives that can be set in the default.root file along with the corresponding link0 commands. Note that max disk would be specified in the first directive, hyphen pound hyphen. We conclude this video with some general recommendations about allocating resources to Gaussian. The size of the job determines the amount of memory that Gaussian will need. For smaller jobs, the default amount will work fine. For jobs on molecules of 50 plus atoms and around 500 basis functions, give Gaussian 4 GB of memory per core. You should follow the preceding recommendations if it is possible on your system. However, be sure not to allocate so much memory to Gaussian that the overall system is starved, as this will degrade all performance, including Gaussian's. As a general guideline, if the total system memory is 32 GB or less, the maximum you should allocate to Gaussian is 50%, in other words, 16 GB. If total system memory is between 32 and 64 GB, you can safely allocate about two-thirds of the total to Gaussian. For systems with more than 64 GB, you can allocate up to about 75% of the total memory. The Freak Mem Utility will calculate the amount of memory required for Hartree Fock and DFT frequency calculations. In this example, a calculation involving 250 atoms, 1000 basis functions, and a basis set including F functions will need about 6 GB per core. In allocating disk space, it is generally recommended to set the max disk to the amount of available space. Also, if you are using post-SCF methods, such as MP2 or CCSD, be aware that having more memory will reduce the disk use. The specific formula for eliminating disk I.O. and CCSD calculations is given here. Solid-state disks can also greatly speed up disk I.O. SSDs are 3 to 5 times faster than high-performance disk drives, at 8 to 10 times the price. SSDs also have much smaller capacities. An SSD can be useful for Gaussian calculations when I.O. is the limiting resource. In practice, this means that an SSD will give little improvement for DFT calculations as they are CPU and or memory limited. In contrast, for I.O. intensive post-SCF methods, an SSD for scratch will make the jobs run significantly faster provided the SSD is large enough for the calculation requirements. The required disk space varies depending on the method used. You can estimate the amount needed by scaling up from a small job using the factor that is appropriate for your method. Note that the Gaussian output file lists the size of the read-write file at the end of the output. Additional information about the topics we have considered here is available on our website.